Dr. Mark J. Gannon, the director of the Low Vision Institute in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Let's talk about dry eyes. One of the things I'm asked about most frequently relates to eye conditions and especially dry eye conditions. But dry eye conditions can be very misleading in terms of the way they present themselves. True dry eyes don't produce any tears at all. And as a result, when that occurs, the eye dries out and there is no lubrication to the front of the eye and no moisture and the tissue itself frequently becomes very red and inflamed and it's extremely uncomfortable. That condition is very easy to identify when it occurs and there's a lot of simple solutions and some more complex to restore moisture to the front of the eye. Typically we'll do uh, implants where we'll block the little canals, the drainage canals to the eye and retain the tears in the eye for a much longer period of time and that again helps to lubricate the eye and moisten it. Or we'll utilize eye drops in addition to those to keep the eye again lubricated and through certain vitamins and mineral supplements, especially omega-3 fish oils, we're able to restore a better tear construction and tear flow. So there are some things that we can do in dry eye situations to uh, improve that condition substantially. The other form of dry eye is very misleading. Patients will come in and complain of their eyes running and tearing. These are really truly dry eyes in, for the most part, but they're dry for a different reason. They're not dry because we don't produce a tear. They're dry because we don't produce a normal tear. The tear layer itself is, has three basic parts to it. An oily layer closest to the air, which preserves the watery layer immediately beneath it from evaporating. The watery layer is there to provide moisture, and directly beneath that there's a mucus layer that's there to provide lubrication for the lids. If the oily layer breaks down prematurely, the watery layer evaporates too quickly and the eye dries out. But it's not dry because it can't produce tears, it's dry because it doesn't produce a normal tear. So what the body does to compensate is it produces excessive tears. So all of a sudden you have a runny, wet eye and you go to the eye doctor and describe that to him and he's busy telling you that the eye is really dry. But it's dry because the function of the tear isn't a normal function. And in that particular instance, we restore it by utilizing eye drops that restore the oily layer of the tear. They fortify it and keep it intact much longer. When that occurs, the watery layer doesn't evaporate, and of course, the eye is much more normal. And these drops, when you put them in, may last anywhere from an hour to several hours, and they have to be reinstilled during the course of the day. And as long as you're doing that, the tearing subsides and everything is fine. So there, there are simple therapies and treatments for dry eyes. And it's a common problem that we're seeing more and more of, especially as we get a little bit older. And under certain environmental situations, like air conditioning in an automobile, the eye may tend to dry faster, so it'll produce excessive tears more readily. And again, under those conditions or situations where you might be sitting and reading or utilizing your eyes for a long period of time and keeping them open, the, uh, the ability to keep them moisturized will help tremendously and keep them from drying out as fast and, and then it'll keep you at task for longer periods of time. So again, if you have dry eyes or runny eyes, make sure you point that out to your eye doctor because there's definitely solutions that can be utilized to re uh, reverse that situation. And once again, there's new hope in sight and thank you very much.